Hello and welcome back to Jacob's Toys. Please do like, share, subscribe and all of those things. All support to the channel is very much appreciated. And in this video we are going to talk about dying action figures. Um, now I have already done a video on how to die action figures. I did that about a year ago. Um, so the quality of the video is not as great but the information in there is still the same as it is today. So do go and check that out and I will link it at the end of this video if you haven't already seen it. Now in that video I die a handful of action figures and accessories black using the uh, synthetic dye that I'm going to use in this video. Um, however in this video I'm going to use red. Now the first thing I would say is make sure you wear gloves as, I can, as I've found out my fingers are now all red. My fingertips are all now red. Now the results weren't as good with the red dye as they were with the black dye. Black is still my favoured colour. Now when it comes to customising I tend to use uh, black dye to, to create a base if it's a black or a dark figure. Um, but I thought I'd experiment with a lighter colour with red because I wanted to do some hand ninjas and I wanted to attempt um, a red suited daredevil custom as well. So this is the process that I used and the, uh, the materials that I used. If you do find it um, helpful then please do leave a comment below and obviously like, share, subscribe and all of those things. Um, so without further ado let's jump into the process and the outcome. So this is the dye that I use. It's Rit Dye More and it's got to be the synthetic one. Make sure that you pick up the synthetic one because otherwise it won't take to the plastic. Now I have no real idea of how this dye is intended to be used but I do understand the process of dyeing the action figures with it. So you can pick these up pretty much from most places. Uh, Amazon's a good place to get it and it retails about $10, about £10 um, per bottle. And there's a handful of different colours. You can get blues, yellows, blacks, browns, greens, red obviously. Uh, my favourite colour, as I said before in the introduction, is black. But I did want to have a little bit of a play around with this red one. So this is Racing Red. It looked like a good red colour, so I thought, why not? Let's give it a shot. Now the figures that I'm going to attempt to dye are these G.I. Joe movie Storm Shadow figures. I've got a couple of these in a absolute bargain of a sale, so they're a couple of quid each. And I picked them up with the intention of them being kind of background ninjas. The idea was to create a kind of hand ninja that goes along with my uh, Netflix or Disney Plus Electra figure from Marvel Legends. Now because these are by Hasbro they scale very well with the Marvel Legends but they are made slightly differently hence why I'm having trouble standing this guy up here. Um, they're a little bit more like the Black Series figures from Hasbro than they are the Marvel Legends but you can see there's a, a load of detail on them and I really like the fact that they've got kind of skirts and stuff. So these were the two that I picked up to be my hand ninjas. I'll just pop the head off and the back piece off. Now they're the two parts that actually do come off. The rest of it I'm going to have to use the boil and pop method to take it apart. Because I want to make sure I can get dye into all those creases and crevices. So there we go. And just while I'm bending that knee, that is something to take note of. When you are dyeing the figure, if you have the leg open or the arm open, it's not going to dye inside of the joint. So make sure that you're taking them out of the die and bending those joints. Now the other one I've thrown together is a Daredevil. So I wanted to do a red suited Daredevil because I no longer have a red suited Daredevil in my Marvel Legends collection and he is incredibly difficult to get hold of nowadays. However, I do feel that we could do an, uh, an upgrade, so maybe a retro carded Daredevil. But for the meantime, I wanted to put one together. So I used this um, Magneto body and I just used the nail polish remover method to remove the black lines. I've also got this uh, Daredevil Netflix or Disney Plus Daredevil. I've created a fashioned a belt out of uh, a bit of an accessory. These are the two original legs with some different feet on them. I swapped the feet out for some boots that I got from, I think it was an MCU Captain America figure. And I've created a little head, kind of made uh, a custom head. Can't remember whose head this was originally. Nighthawk maybe, or Dark Hawk, Dark Hawk. Um, and I just put some little horns on there as well, some little plastic horns. So I'm not sure how that's going to die because naturally the head and the cuffs and the boots are a much darker colour than the rest of the body. So this is going to be a bit of an experiment, but I thought it made for a decent enough red suited Daredevil. So I'll just bend the knees here. And I think what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to completely take him apart, like take all the joints apart and everything so that I don't have to keep moving him around. I think what I'll do as an experiment is I will leave the, the legs assembled on the ninjas, but I will take all of the joints apart on the daredevil, just so that you can see the two different ways of doing the process. So that's my custom base body for my red suited daredevil. 
And as I said, I've got these G.I. Joe movie, is a, the Snake Eye movie, uh, Storm Shadow figures. Um, obviously in the movie there's only one, but I picked up two because they make for a good ninja. So that's it. We'll attempt to dye these three. Now I was racking my brains of what else I could dye red, but there wasn't a huge amount accessory wise that I wanted to dye red. So I'm just going to go for these three figures and we'll see what the outcome is like. I'll just change the lighting so you can see the colours. Uh, and that'll be interesting because there's a lot of different shades here, although the base is light. So here's my kind of setup. I've got a pan and a spoon. Now this is what I used last time I dyed figures black. And you can see that the dye is still there on the spoon. So hopefully that's not going to cause me any problems. It shouldn't do. Um, but just be aware, whatever it is that you're mixing the dye in will change colour. So don't use your best pans or anything like that. Uh, I've also got a dish here that I'm just going to put the hot water in like that. You can see the steam coming off of it. I'm just going to give these guys a little bit of a bath. Uh, be careful because obviously it's boiling hot water. But what it will do is it will soften up the joints and allow me to pick those pieces apart. Looks like these guys are at some kind of weird spa uh, together, which is a bit odd. But yeah, just leave them in there literally for a couple of minutes and it softens them up. And then I'm going to try my best to get this captured on camera. But there you go, straight out of the water and things just pop apart really simply now you can undo all the aspects of the arms and the legs you can take the pins out and everything what you can't do is take the shoulder joints out on the majority of the figures without cracking the torso so i'm not going to go as far as that but i'm going to take these apart and as you can see i'm just using my thumb um, they're quite easy to pull apart because the plastic is very soft just be aware that the pins are very small so you don't want to lose them now luckily on this figure the pins are all the same size so I haven't got to worry about dividing those up because the pins in the legs and the pins in the arms are exactly the same size but do be aware that on some of the figures they have different sized pins in the different holes so just be kind of take a take stock of what it is that you're pulling apart as you're pulling it apart so that you don't mix those up because there's nothing worse than putting the figure back together and realizing that you've put the wrong pin in the wrong place. Now Hasbro are really good in the respect that all the parts have an R or an L on them so you know which one is right and left and the knee joints or the knee hinge if you like even has an arrow so you know which way it's supposed to go up. So just pull those apart like that and having a bit of a problem with this one. Um, if one of them is too tough just pop it back in the hot water for a, another minute or so and it will loosen it up. Try not to use any knives or anything because naturally this plastic is very soft now so if you use a knife at all it will cut the plastic and you, do, you don't want to use anything like any pliers or anything like that that's going to damage the plastic because it is soft and it will uh, cut really really easy. Um, I'm just going to use the back end of a spoon here just because it's got a nice kind of blunt end so I'm not going to cause any real damage to the, to the joint. Now when it comes to the heat I'm doing this on a gas hob here so you need to be a bit careful but just put some hot water in the pan like that I'm not putting a huge amount in because because I've divided all the figures up they're all going to go under the surface there they are all in like a plastic pot just to kind of keep stock of them um, heat the water as you would just boiling water for pasta or whatever um, have your spoon ready so that you can stir it now you just want to be careful you don't want the water to really boil over you don't want it to be boiling like this now this heat is way too high um, if I put the figures in there it's just going to melt them so instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the dye into this boiling hot water and then turn the heat right down so that it's called I'm not cooking the figures um, but this the, the water does need to be boiled in order for the, the dye to work that's what I've learned so far anyway and you can see how thick that dye is um, and how the red goes uh, how the water goes red almost inst almost straight away just goes a really deep red there and you can see that the the boiling water the bubbles have gone down but obviously the temperature of the water is still the same so it's still on the heat at the moment so I'm just gonna stir that in and create nice there you go you can see all that all that steam coming off um, but you can see the the dye mixing in with the water there and that's it just keep mixing it keep mixing it. Now one thing with the dye method that you have got to do is you've got to keep the water moving. You don't want to just let the figures sit in the water. You want to constantly keep it moving. Uh, it allows the, the dye to get into all of the different sort of parts of the figure 
Um, so when I do put the figures in, I'm just going to carry on with this this movement, um, keeping the water moving, and also so they don't stick to the bottom or anything like that. Now I've never had any figures stick to the bottom or melt in this in this kind of concoction of dye and boiling water. Um, I've never had that problem, but I'm not saying that that wouldn't happen. Uh, as you saw there as well, always have a bit of tissue paper because it's dye at the end of the day, um, and you don't want that on your counters. Now there you go, I've just dipped that figure in and already you've seen the dye kind of take to him. So I'm feeling very optimistic about how these are going to turn out. So just pop them all in. Let's have a look at the uh, the daredevil. Let's just throw all these bits in. Where's the daredevil one? It's here somewhere. Here we go. Um, let's just have a look how that's going to take. Okay, that's not too bad. Like straight away you see the red just kind of take over. So I'm just going to throw all of the pieces in. Now just be aware, because I'm putting the pins in as well, they are going to be very small. So you're going to have to make sure you're stirring right down to the bottom uh, so that nothing's kind of sticking. Now I say sticking, but as I said, I've never had that problem. But I think it's because I'm, I'm quite um, thorough when it comes to my stirring. Now just be very careful when you're putting stuff in. Um, I'll put the bigger pieces in one at a time. The smaller pieces you can pour in just like this, but just be very careful. You don't want any of it to splash. You don't want any stuff to splash up on the sides um, because this is dye at the end of the day and it will stain whatever surface it lands on, including clothes, skin, everything. So uh, I've put quite a lot. I've put about three quarters of the bottle in this mixture. So it's a very, th it's a very thick um, concentrate of dye in there. Uh, just keep it moving around and after a few minutes you can see how the dye has already taken to a lot of these pieces already it's got like a really nice bright red on it but the thing that I have found is that where the figures are made using different plastics the dye takes to it in different ways so you can see there like the the arm pieces and the torso piece have a different tone to them have like a different shade to them because they're made out of different plastics now the movie Deadpool head at the movie Deadpool, the movie Daredevil hasn't actually taken the Storm Shadow's taken really nicely, but there's there's no colour there on that at all. And here we go, here are all the pieces after they've been in that pot for about probably about 30 minutes, I think I did it all for in total. Um the Storm Shadows have gone really nice. Um I really like that red. Now I was gonna paint their faces, but I quite like the way that the the red dye has made it go kind of a pinky and the, the eye is really dark. Um, the movie, de uh, TV show Daredevil, it's done nothing to. My custom head, it's done nothing to. But you can see it's a really nice red colour on the majority of these figures. So having assembled them back together, you can see here how, what I was saying, the different shades leave a different colour. Now, that Daredevil head has done nothing but give him a bit of a burnt skin look. My fingers are bright red. Now this Daredevil custom is definitely going to require some paint touching up. So I'm going to have to touch up those shoulders, I'm going to have to do the head and I'll probably do the like gauntlet elements of his arm as well. The ninjas however have taken really nicely, I think these have come out really nice. There's enough variation in shade that I'm not going to add any paint to these whatsoever. They are done, they are finished. Um, and considering they're going to be background characters, they're going to be things that I use in the back of photographs or in the back of displays, um, I'm quite happy with how they look. Now the black on that shoe hasn't changed at all. Now the rule of thumb that I've come to learn from dyeing is that you can't really dye darker. So where these were white and cream, they've gone red, but anything kind of darker hasn't really taken. So the blues, the blacks, um, even the silver of those gauntlets haven't really taken. Um, the only thing about these I think the shoulders are a little bit darker, but because there's a lot of armor plating on their shoulders, that's not a huge issue. But I'm really, I really like the way that the faces have turned out. I'm really happy with those. I'm not going to lie. Um, there's something a bit supernatural looking about them. Now there is a bit of a red tinge to those boots, so that works. But the head, it's done absolutely nothing but made his face look a little bit burnt. So yeah, all in all, I'm happy with the result. Now. Unlike the black dye, I am, am going to have to go to this Daredevil and add a little bit of paint. So um, let me just move all the Daredevil pieces out of the way and we'll just have a look at these hand ninjas on their own. Um, but yeah, that's the three of them together for one kind of final shot. And I'm not going to add any paint to the hand ninjas, but I am going to add paint to the Daredevil and we'll get back to him very shortly. 
So let's just spend a couple of minutes just kitting these hand ninjas out. Now, I'm fortunate enough that I have a couple of the official um, hand ninjas from Hasbro and they come with these really cool weapons. I can't remember the official name of these weapons, but I've got two sets of them. But I also have two sets of the swords that come with Storm Shadow. So let me just put his original swords in his hands. Now, obviously, if I was keeping the swords with him, the benefit would be that there are the sheath on his back. So I could put the swords um, on his back. So that is definitely a benefit for keeping the swords with the character. But if truth be told, the two um, red hand ninjas that I have on my display, I've swapped out their weapons for swords from Deadpool, I think it was. But they've both got uh, two swords. So I think these two custom hand ninjas, I'm going to give these axe things. Uh, and I'll just leave the back piece on his back for if and when I want to put the swords in his back. Or I might even just put the swords on his back and give him these two kind of axe things. Because they're just really kind of screen ninja. So there we go. There's two, uh, two alternate looks for these hand ninjas. And I think considering, as I said, I'm using these guys as background characters for photography or for displays. Kitting them out with a, a pair of weapons each and just dyeing the figures straight away, not doing any touch up work to them whatsoever. They look absolutely fine. Um, I'm actually really pleased with how these have turned out and obviously saved me a lot of painting if I was going to do that. Now let's take a look at Daredevil. Now here he is with a little bit of extra work put in. So I have painted his cow. I used paint to do his headpiece and I used paint to do his shoulders and the gauntlets. And when I've added the paint, oh, and also, obviously, I put uh, an emblem there on his chest as well, as you can see. Now, I really like the kind of, I can't really get a good angle of it on the on the film, but the red has kind of left like a, almost like a metallic red on his eyepieces, which is really cool. Now, all I've actually done is paint the shoulders, the gauntlets, and the headpiece, along with the emblem on the chest. And then I've obviously stuck the belt on there as well. But it's very minimal work considering the amount of work I would have had to have done to paint this figure. I would have had to sand down the joints, I would have had to obviously take him all apart and paint all the various different parts of him, but there's a lot of prep work in order to not get any paint rub. And because I've used the dye method, all of the, um, all of the articulation has got dye on it, so it saved me a lot of work. So a little bit of paint on the headpiece and on the shoulder pieces and the gauntlets really isn't a big deal and a huge time saver in my opinion. Now naturally I like to take photos of my figures so here's just a handful of shots. Here's one with Electra with the hand ninjas um, and all of my photos are available over on Instagram jacobs at underscore toys. Here's Daredevil um, and then I've changed the lighting around a little bit and done a different version of him but this looks pretty cool and this is the other version of him and you can see he photographs really well as do the hand ninjas. So yeah, you can see those over on my Instagram, Jacobs underscore toys. So there we go. I hope you found that useful. As I said before, please do uh, drop a comment below if you've got any questions. Um, hopefully I've answered everything in the video itself. And as promised, um, I will link the video for the how to die action figures using the black die um, on this video as well. So please do like, share, subscribe and all of those things. And I'll catch you next time.